Hey Forge members and welcome to the 8th tutorial in our React series. Now this one's going to be pretty exciting. We are finally stepping into Redux, which if you've heard about React, you've probably also heard about Redux. It's like a huge topic. A lot of a lot of people love to talk about it. In fact, if you even Google it, you'll see that there's a ton of stuff on it and getting started with Redux and React. So I found it to be a bit challenging to onboard onto Redux, so I'm going to show you in this video a very simple tutorial on how Redux works. I'm going to give you an example of how Redux works, and then we're going to implement it into something simple like a counter. And then on the next couple videos, we're going to build on our knowledge and continue using Redux and then integrate it with something known as Redux Saga. So before we get started, let's take a look at how Redux works. So let's say from everything that you have learned from these tutorials, you have a very simple uh, app. So here's your main component, your main web page, and within there we have a, a component. So this uh, this rectangle right here will be our main uh, component within our app. So then within this component, let's say we have another component that looks like this. Uh, you know, maybe we're reusing it a couple of times. Maybe it's like an input field or something like that, and. Whenever we change something in that input field, let's say this one asks for the user's name. I apologize in advance for my really poor drawing skills. I'm on a trackpad. So let's say this text box enters a name. And then below that, we have another component out here that says uh, something like, um, let's say, it says, in this component we say, Hel we say hello. Uh, whatever your name is. So let me make that a bit smaller so that it fits. Uh, okay. So, okay, we can definitely make that a bit bigger. Mm, okay. So it says, hello, name. So whenever we want our program so that whenever we type something in to this inner component right here, it updates this component down here. Now, if you've been paying attention, it you would know that it's actually sort of a mission to do that. In fact, we would have to create a function that whenever someone types in name here, it would relay the name to the outside component, which is this uh, this one outlined in blue right here. And then, w and then that component would then relay it to this main component, which would then relay it to this. And in order to do that, we're going to have to use a lot of different props and uh, child uh, references, so um, uh, child's calling parent functions, all to pass that one variable, that one state variable into this um, into this component. Now, Redux, what Redux allows you to do is it acts as sort of a global state for your entire React application. So instead of having to do to pass name from that component all the way to this component, then to this component, and then into this component, what we can do is we can have what's known as a reducer, and that reducer will store a bunch of variable names. So at first, name will be something like, um, we can initialize name to be undefined. So we'll just do un und so if you can't read that and then whenever the user types in name into this column or sorry this input all we do is we trigger uh, what we call an action which we'll be diving into in uh, in more detail we trigger an action which then says to our reducer hey I want to make the name variable in here from undefined to whatever the person typed in. And then this variable right here will just always be equal to whatever this is. So when it's undefined, we can have it just show nothing. And when the variable changes, we can have it say whatever the variable changed to. So there's no more passing state variables from this component to this component to this component to this component. Now we just have a global state that any component has access to. And in its core, that's really all that Redux is. Now, Redux is made of a couple of different, um, different functions. So uh, number one, we have our reducer, which 
will take in of which is the thing that actually holds all the variables in the first place and um, has the uh, functionality to change the variables and update them. We have these things called actions, which is what your um, your React components will be dealing with directly. So whenever you want something in your React component to trigger uh, to change something in your reducer, so maybe I should label it so we can see here reducer and this I can put another label here for your action whenever uh, whenever you want something in your component to uh, replace a variable in our reducer we trigger what is known as an action and our action will be the thing that uh, tells the reducer that we want to change one of the variables okay and whenever we want to use one of the variables from the reducer inside of one of our components we simply just import it as a prop it's as simple as that so now that you sort of have an high level overview let's do a real example uh, let, let's get started on a real example so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do make another create react app and let's call this counter with redux now oh no capital no capital so we'll make this all lowercase and by the way um a couple of you guys have been asking uh, where you can find this code. I have pushed all of this code to a GitHub repository, and in the description of this video, you will be able to get um, all the code that we have done throughout all the videos. Uh, it'll be all in there, uh, in that GitHub repository. So feel free to go and check it out after the video. Um, you can play around with the code. You can see exactly what I've done. So as you can see, I've skipped a bit ahead and our React project is done setting up. It's just the default React app that we are used to. I've gone ahead and started it. And if we go to our browser, we can see that it's just the same uh, Create React app that we've been dealing with throughout all these tutorials. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install. So npm install. Redux, which is the core Redux library, and also React Redux, which contains all the bindings that connects uh, Redux and makes it usable by React. And we're going to go ahead and uh, type dash dash save so that they are both saved to our package.json. While all of that is loading, we can go ahead and clean up some of the code here. And I'm going to take the counter uh, class that we made in one of our last videos. So just a basic counter, and I'm going to pop that guy right in here. So let's briefly go through this, just in case you don't remember. All we're doing is, uh, in this portion, we are setting up a counter. We're setting the count equal to zero within the state. We have one button that increments the count. We have one button that decrements it, and uh, we can just hear in the uh, G JSX, um, this is where our buttons are. And it says the current count is blank, and then the two buttons that increment and decrement. So I'm going to go ahead and import that into our app. Uh, so import counter from counter. And we're going to go ahead and pop that. We'll get rid of all of this stuff. In fact, we'll just get rid of all of this. And we're just going to have the counter. Now we can go back to our app and we can see here all we have is a simple uh, counter. We can increment and decrement the count. Now what we want to do is change it so that this counter, I mean right now this counter doesn't fall under sort of the um, the outline that we use to make this like it doesn't really make sense to replace this with redux but showing you how to do this in this video I'm just going to show you how we would replace it with redux and then in the next video I'm most likely going to give you an application where it actually makes more sense uh, to do it but this video is just to understand the very core basics of redux while it still installs and it is taking quite a long time uh, to install now that redux is set up we can go ahead and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our reducer so we're going to go ahead and make a file called re reducer.js now it's good to note that in uh, more production ready apps uh, you'll see that the reducers and the stores and the actions and all this stuff will be organized into folders for now we're not going to worry about any of that uh, any of that let's just jump straight into uh, the nitty-gritty of things so Remember, the reducer is here for uh, two things. Number one, it holds our state. And number two, it has functions that based on what action happens, it will say what to do with the objects in our state. So sort of like handler functions. So 
I'm going to paste in what it's going to look like right now and walk us through it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize our initial state. Now, every single variable that we want to be in the state will be initialized here. So in our example, since we're just using a counter, the only variable we need is a count, and we are going to initialize that count to zero. Now, the next part of it might look a bit complicated, but let's step through this one by one. So the reducer gets triggered whenever an action occurs, as we saw from our diagram. And actions come from the components themselves. So these actions come in the form of a string. So for example, one of our action types could be increment, and one of our action types could be decrement. So what we are doing here is we are setting up a little structure here so that whenever an action is triggered, we look at the type of action it is, and then depending on the type of action, we deal with it differently. So if the action type is an increment action, you can guess what we're going to do. We are going to uh, take in our state and we are going to rewrite the count variable in our state with whatever the current count is plus one. And when we have a decrement action, we are going, oh, there's a console log in here. When we have a decrement action, we are going to rewrite the count in our state to be equal to whatever the count was previously minus one. And if an action triggers that doesn't call any of these cases uh, we've uh, um, we have uh, accounted for, it will just return uh, the state straight up. Now, this return isn't actually putting, pushing the state anywhere. Uh, all it's doing here is overriding the current state with what we want our new variables to be. So this default return won't actually link to anything or won't actually be used in any case. Now that we have our reducer set up, we can go ahead and we can create our actions. We're going to create a JavaScript file called actions.js. And in here, you're going to see the code for this is going to be a lot simpler than the reducer. Essentially, what we're doing is we're exporting a function uh, based on every action that we want to have. So in this case, we have two very simple actions. We have the increment action and the decrement action. Now, the type here specifies what string it will fire off. Now, this string has to be identical to the one that we are catching in the reducer. It's important to note that we can also uh, take in a variable if we wanted to. Um, so for example, in some applications, your action, like for, uh, for the example where we had uh, the, name, the name one here, we could do something like export const set name is equal to, and then we would pass the name in like this. We would then, uh, and then in here we'd be type, the type would be something like set name. And then we would set the name variable equal to the name that we're passing in through this. And we would actually be able to, if we were to catch uh, the case set name, um, we would actually be able to uh, get the name by doing action.name. Uh, instead of, see here we have action.type, which uh, gets the, the variable type. If we did action.name, we would have access to that name variable, and we could go ahead and set uh, the name in our initial state if we wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and, the, and delete that, um, but I just wanted to let you know that for your own sake. Uh, that way, in the next video, when we actually use that functionality, uh, you'll be able to grasp it easier. So we have made our action and we've made our reducer. There are a couple things we have to do uh, left. For one, we A, have to connect our component to this action. We have to make uh, this, this action callable through our component. And B, we have to do something, uh, we have to set up, uh, we have to link our app with our Redux store in the first place. So let's go ahead and do that first. So let's go ahead and create a JavaScript file called store.js. And in here, this is what the code will look like. We're going to get the create store function from Redux. We're going imp to uh, import our reducer that we just made. Uh, so this should be uppercase R. 
Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say our store is going to be equal to uh, the create store function of the reducer. So essentially what we're setting up for is we want to pass in our, our reducer. We want to be able to pass in the variables inside of our reducer, in this case count, as a prop to our app. In order to do that, we have to quote use the store within our application. So the way we do that is we simply come into our app.js, the root of our entire project. You can also uh, put this in the index.js as well if you want. In fact, let's go ahead and put that in our index.js. So what we can do here is we can import the provider class and we're going to take that from React Redux. And what we're going to do with that is we are going to wrap it around our app div, uh, our application tag, just like this. Provider, and then we can go ahead and put app in here. So our entire Re React application is now wrapped around with this. So the last thing we have to do is we have to simply import the store that we made. So import store from dot slash store. And what we do is in the provider, we just write store is equal to store. And what that says is pretty much in every single component that uh, is in that every single child component from this provider tag, we are going to be passing in this store as a prop. And as you saw before, this store, all it does is it creates a store with the reducer and the reducer is where the real magic happens. So just to recap, um, what is going to be happening is our counter, our counter component is going to be calling our action. Our action will then tell the reducer what type of operation we want to perform. In the case of an increment, it is going to increment uh, this count by one and it will then display it on the counter. And that's the last part. We just have to now connect our counter a to our reducer uh, variable and B to the action that it can call. So let's go ahead and do that. We are going to be using two magic functions that are called map state to props and map dispatch to props. Now it sounds a bit confusing, but they're really simple. Map state to props is pretty much uh, this is where you put what variables, uh, what state variables you want to include in your component from the reducer. So in this case, if we look at the reducer, the only variable we really care about is the count. So we are going to say count is equal to state.count, where state is just our reducer's uh, state. And you can call this anything. You could say reducer state and then replace that here. But the nomenclature, the default uh, is usually just state. Now, what this allows us to do is it will make it so that our count, whenever we want to access this count from our reducer, all we have to do is instead of saying this.state.count like we did in the previous counter, in fact, we can go ahead and get rid of um, this whole constructor right here uh, that declares a state. We can just replace it with this.props.count. So this is pretty much saying we are going to pass whatever variable we have here in as a prop and the name of the prop is going to be count. So if we were to name this like a uh, current count, then we would also change this to current count as well. Now, the second uh, magic function here is map dispatch to props. And this is where you call, pr pretty much this is where you select which actions you're going to be using. So we look at our actions.js and we can see here there are two actions that we want to use, the increment and the decrement. So all we have to do here is write increment and decrement. And we have to import those actions from actions. So we can say import increment and decrement from dot slash actions. And just like before, just like before, um, if we want to then call this action, we refer to it from this dot props. So if we look here, if you remember the counter function, our button on click, we call this increment function over here. And in here, we edit the state, but remember, we no longer have a state in our component. So instead, we want to call this.props.increment. 
and for decrement we want to call this dot props dot decrement and this dot props dot increment and decrement are coming from uh, map dispatch to props and that is coming from these actions so now the last thing we have to do is we have to do what is known as connecting our components so if you remember from I think the third or fourth um, uh, React tutorial, one of the things I talked about is putting the export default down here so that you can wrap uh, whatever your class name is in a uh, special tags. So we're actually going to use that now. We are first going to want to import uh, something called connect from React Redux. So we're going to import connect from uh, React Redux. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of having export default counter, we're going to wrap this counter in our connect. So you can see we're exporting default connect and then it, the, so let me see if I can make this look a bit more intuitive. So if you see here, the first, uh, the first um, thing in connect, in the first brackets, we have map state to props and map stitch dispatch uh, to props. And then the second thing is counter. Pretty much what we're doing is we're applying these props to, uh, onto our counter component so that our counter component has access uh, to these variables inside these props, or sorry, the, the variables inside of our, uh, our state and our dispatch as props. Now, if we save that, it'll format it. Oh, and it looks like we forgot to just put um, brackets since we are calling a function here. So now, if we were to save that, we can go back to our Chrome and let's see if uh, this works. So if we click increment, as you can see, it is incrementing the count. And if we click decrement, we are decrementing the count. So let's actually do a bit of digging. So inside of our reducer for case increment, let's console.log, console.log, uh, we caught an incre increment action. Oops, action. So you'll see here, if we inspect if we inspect our uh, console here, whenever we click increment, bam, we caught an increment action. You can see it's been called four times now for all the four times we've incremented. So to give you one uh, final rundown of how this is working, so we have a reducer that has inside of it a state and uh, a couple functions. Whenever we go into our account, whenever we click a button to increment our count, it calls an action that action then calls our uh the corresponding uh case within our reducer which then does something to the state and our counter is then getting the state um getting the state and the actions to call from map state to props and map uh dispatch to props i hope that cleared up how redux works and um how you incre how, how you include it with a react i will be pushing this code up so if you still are a bit iffy on it you can go to the github that will be in the um that will be in the description below and you can actually go and play around with it yourself just clone the repository run an npm install and do an npm start uh npm start and you can put some console.logs everywhere to see what's getting triggered when so thanks for watching guys in the next tutorial i'm probably going to be doing a, a bit of a more um hands-on tutorial when it comes to redux something that's a bit more applicable and uh realistic uh, for Redux's uses and also either in that tutorial or the next one I'm gonna go over Redux Saga which will tie in the back-end work uh, and with Express that we did in the last tutorial. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.